Today we're gonna to be talking about my best six tips for beginner street photography, from the type of gear you should be using all the way to some techniques that you can utilize to make some amazing street photos. This video is going to be packed with information, so trust me, you're going to wanna to stay till the end. And with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Okay, so if you are just getting into the realm of street photography, first of all, welcome and I congratulate you. You're going to have a very, very fun journey learning about this genre of photography. Now, I will say though, it's one of the more challenging but also rewarding genres as there's not many rules to kind of, you know, shape into kind of like portraiture or maybe even landscape. Um, and so it allows you to push yourself outside of the box of creativity. There's nothing more rewarding than capturing that one photograph that could possibly change the world or even just in the way you see things you know sometimes all the stars align and if you're in the right place at the right time you may be next in capturing an amazing street photograph now obviously this comes with a couple of risks as well and this is why it is nerve-wracking a lot of times you are going to have to react quickly and even photograph strangers in the process but luckily I'm going to make it very simple today and offer you guys with my best six tips so that I can ensure the next time you go out, you're going to be able to have street photos to take home. So with that said, let's go ahead and start off with my first tip. And that one is going to be surrounding the camera that you will be using. Now, I'm not going to suggest a particular camera or camera type. Rather, the first tip that I have for you is to shoot the camera you are most comfortable with. Um, this is huge and trust me when I say this there are people out on the streets making street photographs every day With cameras that they're just not really comfortable with now This should be pretty self-explanatory But the idea behind this is when you're comfortable with a camera not only are you going to be able to you know Operate the camera quickly But you should know it like the back of your hand and be able to use it kind of like an extension of your body um, you know, that's very cliche to say, but it's honestly so freaking true. You want to be able to go out there and not have to worry about, you know, oh, how am I going to set the aperture on this, you know, lens? Does this thing have, you know, weird functions or features that I need to learn about before I go out there? Your focus should not be on your camera while you're out on the streets. It should be kind of, you know, scanning and looking around, uh, trying to find those photographs to capture. And when you have something that you're not comfortable with like a camera or even like a lens that you're not comfortable with you might find that you are spending more time worrying about the camera rather than what is in front of you so by using whatever camera you have available it doesn't need to be the most expensive camera you know it could be your phone it could be one of these it could be a film camera it could be a dslr as long as you are comfortable with it and you are comfortable operating it that is going to be the best camera for you when shooting street photography and i, I sincerely mean it you know, if it means you have to spend some time with a camera to learn it and to kind of, you know, get it to where you memorize where everything is, uh, take that time. It's, it's worth the investment to be able to know how to operate your camera comfortably. This also goes for lenses and focal lengths. You know, if you are very used to shooting with a 50 millimeter focal length, continue to shoot with the 50 millimeter focal length. Regardless of what anyone says, you know, maybe some people are saying oh, a 28 millimeter is great because it's wide angle or if you're like me, you know, I always I pretty much have a 35 millimeter lens for every one of my cameras. Remember to only listen to what you are most comfortable with. So if you are comfortable with shooting with a 70 to 200 lens, if that's what's comfortable to you, go with it, man. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It matters to you and what you are going to be comfortable operating. So. Whatever that is to you, stick to that one lens and you know one camera body. Uh, learn it, you know, get the ins and outs of it, and be sure that you are comfortable operating the camera without you know having to fluster around when you're out making photographs. That would be my first and only tip on camera gear. Now, tip number two, we're just gonna go right into the meat about how to make some of the most beautiful candid street photographs that you could possibly make. Um, the next thing we're gonna be talking about is the fishing technique. 
Now, if you've never heard of this before, do not worry. I'm going to try my best to explain it as simply as possible. Um, but just know that the fishing technique is something that I use every time I go out to make photographs. And it's something that takes very, very little practice to you know, start getting into. Now, the way I'm going to explain the fishing technique is through a scenario. It's a scenario that every photographer will eventually come across. As you're walking down you know, whatever city or whatever area you are photographing, you might find a composition or you know maybe just like a nice patch of light that looks beautiful and you want to photograph it. Now the fishing technique all you're going to be doing is you're going to be pulling the camera up to your face and you're going to compose that scene and you're just going to sit there and you're going to wait and this is where the fish comes into it. You're going to pretty much sit there with your camera, have the composition set up into your favor however you want to, you know, set it up and you're going to wait till somebody walks through the frame. When somebody walks through that frame, you can go ahead and make the photograph. And there you have it, there is the fishing technique. You're setting up your composition, you wait for someone to walk through and snap your photograph. Um, this is one of the easier ways to get started when shooting street photography because it takes the pressure off of you and it puts the pressure more on whoever's walking around. You know, it looks like you're setting up to photograph just maybe, you know, a random alleyway or even just that, you know, random piece of light that's just shining down from a skyscraper. And if they walk in that frame, uh, you know, that's on them. You're not really kind of sticking a camera in somebody's face. It's a little bit more laid back than something like, you know, going up and candidly making a photograph of somebody just right off the bat. Now the fishing technique, although it may seem simple, does take some practice. Even getting your confidence level up to be able to just point a camera and have someone walk through the frame is going to take some work. But as you continue to do it, look for those interesting compositions. You know, maybe look for something interesting. Maybe it's a sign or, you know, some wall art and have them walk into the frame. Uh, trust me, as you practice and as you kind of grow as a street photographer, it's something that you will always have in your arsenal. It's a, it's a tool that you will find very, very useful. I hope I explained that well, but that is the fishing technique. Again, I use it almost every time I go out to make a photograph. Now, before we get on to tip number three, you guys, I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, as a street photographer, Squarespace is a great place for you to make your own website and portfolio. Now, if you're like me and you don't know how to build a website, Squarespace pretty much gives you all the tools, everything from award-winning templates to the different pages you can make. One of my favorites, of course, is the portfolio feature. But another great thing about Squarespace is they allow you to create your own e-commerce store. And this is a great option for anybody out there who wants to start selling their street photography through prints. Um, and so if you guys want to get started with your own website, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes or enter promo code kingjapes at checkout and you guys are going to get 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Make your next move with Squarespace. Now tip number three, you guys, is going to be a little bit more of a lighter technique. Um, and it's a technique that I learned from some of the other guys in the city that I have been shooting with these last couple of years. One thing I noticed was that most of the time I found myself walking closer to the street rather than the sidewalk. Not necessarily like on the street, you know, folks, be safe out there, do not walk in the middle of the street. But what I'm saying is when you're on that curb, walk closer towards the street. When you're hugging kind of, you know, the edge of the curb right there, what you'll notice is that you're gonna start looking into the sidewalks and you're gonna start to see a lot more things. It's going to open up a lot of more opportunities to catch interesting subjects, uh, different, you know, compositions, different, you know, streaks of light that you can utilize in composition. Uh, it, it's just going to be able to give you more of a, a better field of view. I guess, you know, stick to kind of like, the outskirts of where the activity is so that you're looking in rather than looking out. It may not seem as impactful as the other tips, but trust me, when I was taught this technique, uh, it, it absolutely opened up the world to me and uh, I, I started to find a lot more subjects to photograph. Now, tip number four is absolutely essential, folks, and that is to learn your lens and practice focusing. Focusing is going to be your best friend when making street photographs and the reason for that is you need to be able to focus quickly Especially if you're using a manual focus lens uh, Excuse me <laughs> a manual focus lens um, as most of your subjects are going to be moving around now the way I like to personally practice focusing is taking the camera to my face whatever camera you're using again um, and just you know looking around the room 
and focusing on different subjects. Maybe the next time you, you know, just want to sit around or you're watching TV, take the camera to the couch with you, uh, focus on the screen, then focus on something in front of you. The faster you focus, the better you're going to be able to react out on the street. And the more, you know, times you get things accurate and accurately in focus, excuse me, uh, the better and more sharp your images are going to look. Now, practicing manual focusing is great. Um, but there are other techniques that you can learn out there like zone focusing, uh, scale focusing, which is essentially kind of the same thing. And if you've never heard of those techniques, I recommend you check them out because it makes uh, learning street photography and just manual focus a lot, lot easier. <laughs> Regardless if you're shooting manual or autofocus, practice, practice, practice your focusing. That's something that you need to practice all the time. So moving on now to tip number five. This one I wanna take a little bit more time uh, to talk about because it's one of the ones that I think are going to be a lot more impactful when it comes to you know real, real tips that are going to work. Tip number five, you guys, is photographing with intention. Now, what does this mean? You, you may have heard this before, and there are a dozen different meanings to photographing with intention, but I'm going to try to explain it in my own words. Now, my definition of photographing with intention simply means photograph to tell a story, photograph to kind of, you know, share a narrative through your photographs. And this really all starts with what catches your eye. I always get asked that question, you know, what do you look for when you're out photographing on the streets? You know, what catches your eye? Um, and that's really where it starts, you know, looking for that subject, looking for that person, that composition. Uh, maybe you see some duality with two people walking. Maybe they're wearing the same outfit. It's those narratives or there's smaller, smaller details, excuse me, that really kind of make a photograph. And as a photographer, you're not just an operator of the camera. You are also the creative director. And whatever you see and perceive is going to be shown into those photographs by the way you photograph it. And so I guess always look for a story or something to kind of highlight within a photograph. Uh, you wanna be able to look at the image and automatically see what uh, the photographer was trying to photograph. And if you can't really kind of point out those little details or you know what exactly you're photographing, it may or may not uh, be that you're not photographing with intention. Maybe you're just kind of you know spraying and praying or to get closer. That's a very simple tip, you know, you get more detail when you are closer to your subject. Um, it's a little bit more nerve wracking, of course, but it's true. The closer you are to somebody or something, the more detail they're going to see and it can help tell the story better. So I guess just learn to photograph with intention. And last but not least, you guys, tip number six is going to be get comfortable with exploring areas that you aren't familiar with. Uh, there's a saying that some of the best street photographs are made when you least expect it. In fact, some of my favorite photographs that I've made personally have been when I ventured off, you know, just randomly. Like, let me give you guys a couple of examples here. I'm used to photographing in the kind of inner parts of a larger city. Um, and so, obviously knowing that, one day I wanted to kind of explore the coast a little bit. I think this is when COVID was, you know, first getting, you know, picking up, I should say. I went to the coast hoping that I would be able to catch just some nice landscapes, some some nice, you know, kind of scenery. Um, and I ended up photographing a scene in which the birds that were, I don't know if they were seagulls or I don't know what type of birds they were, but a flock of birds perfectly lining up and kind of creating like a leading line to um, this guy who was watching the sunset out into the Pacific Ocean. It's just one of my favorite photographs just because I like the way it looks. I love the sunset in the background um, and it came in a time where, you know, I, I was just exploring and I was trying to get more comfortable with venturing out from my, you know, usual path. If there's one part of this video that I hope inspires you, I hope this is the tip that, you know, allows you to go out there and really just explore and, you know, have some fun. Maybe go take the subway or the, the train, the BART, whatever, and, you know, get off at a random stop or maybe stop by into a random city and walk around with your camera whatever this means to you get out there and just explore find different things and especially when you're getting started one of the best ways to make photographs in the first place is just to capture scenes and if it means that you know you're you're just pointing your camera at a scene with people in it maybe there's nice lighting um, and you're in an unknown area and you're you're just completely new to 
the setting around you. You're gonna see a lot more things and a lot more fresh kind of ideas pop into your head and uh, that's going to lead to some better photographs. And at the end of the day, you guys, it all takes practice. Everything we talked about today from focusing, from selecting camera gear, from fishing technique to, you know, photographing with intention, it takes practice. But the one thing that you can do to increase your chance of getting more street photographs is to put yourself in areas that you don't really know. Um, always stay safe, of course, folks. But when you photograph areas that, you know, have new scenery, everything is going to be fresh to your eyes. It's going to lead to more photographs again. And overall, it's going to improve your street photography. So get out there, man. You know, look for those scenes. Start to photograph scenes. Use the fishing technique. Try to photograph by telling a story. If you, if you combine all those things today and, you know, keep those in mind while you're out photographing, I guarantee you you're going to make images that are not only going to be pleasing you, but are going to possibly please others. So that is my list of my six best street photography tips uh, for beginners. Of course, if this video has helped you out at all, I have a ton of other videos on the channel. I mean, if you are brand new, you know, hit that subscribe button down below. I'm trying my best to get back to six videos a month. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, including projects. And so I'm sorry if I haven't been uploading, you know, all too often lately, uh, but, we are going to get back to it. So thank you guys so much, man, for tuning into this episode. I'll see you guys the next one. As always, middle to game.